So g'day all, Mark here. Welcome back to the other side where we speak to topsport.com.au about what's happening from the bookie side of the fence. I'm joined as usual by Tristan from Top Sport. How are you going, Tristan? Yeah, good, Mark. How about yourself? Yeah, it's not too bad. Perhaps not quite as well as you after, uh, yeah, watched the live stream last night and it was definitely one for the bookies. Yeah, it was. The uh, the boys threw plenty of bullets at us and um, we were uh, got a little bit of luck and got a few of the few checks when we needed them. So, yeah, it was one uh, one for top, Team Top Sport, obviously, squared the leisure after the boys gave us a pretty uh, sizable touch-up last time around. So, um, yeah, it's uh, one all now, so we'll see what happens next time they go around. I think they're still just in front, aren't they? They are. They are just in front. They they're still about a hundred k lead. So uh, we're, we're one set all. Go to the decider next. It we'll, might be best of five. We'll see how we go. Yeah. Probably just highlights. Um, I guess life as a bookie. It's um, you know, it's not a real consistent existence, if you like, work wise. You you're gonna have really good days and really bad days. That's the aim of the game. Um, is that something that you're? Because bearing in mind you are a director of the company and you know you're playing with. Playing with your own money, for want of a better term, is it something you've had to learn to to get used to, or have you always been all right with it emotionally? I guess. Oh, you, you, you certainly don't. Um, like it, it's it's not easy all the time. Like like there are big swings, and they can go for extended runs, and you can have, you know, especially when there's some big numbers flying around on these big sports over the spring. And and whilst you know, in theory, the percentages are meant to be in your favour when you're playing a lot of guys. Like you look at that last night. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure how many of your listeners tuned in, but if, just for anyone that's not aware, we, we, we took on a, the little birdie syndicate on the Greyhounds last night, and there were dogs getting back there from $7 into three thirty and three forty. And mm. you know, if, if you're laying most of them like we were at the top of the market, then um, you know, he, 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 the, the percentage goes out the window pretty quickly. So you, you've, you've sort of got to back your prices that you put up there. You, you've got to do your best a bit. Like when the market's firming like that, it's very difficult to, uh, to make a book. You, you sort of... You know, playing a little bit of Russian roulette, and and it's the same as in, in a lot of other sports, and 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 that's why we're sort of happy to get involved on the on the events where you know they're meant to be liquid, and and your big rugby league and your big AFL games, and we're happy to to take customers on at, at big stakes and that. But yeah, there, there's a lot of volatility in it, and and you know when when you when you're on an ordinary run, it's amazing. It's 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 the same as a punter. You things go with you. You wave. You ride that wave of of uh, momentum for a lack of a better word for a while. It's amazing how some weeks you feel like you can't do anything wrong and other weeks you feel like you can't do anything right. And, um, and we're, we're no different to punters. You know, you, you, you ride those results. You, the whole team gets behind it. We had a, just as big a swing actually last night on the rugby league game where we, we laid a really big bet on the Cowboys one to 12. And, um, when uh, the debutant but burst over and crashed over to go 13 plus, there was a big cheer up in the office. So even though like, you know, you've got that sense of it's a, uh, like it, it's a not non-emotional game when you're on the other side of the fence. There is a lot of uh, there is you know you, you still ride those results and that, that's part of the enjoyment because you wouldn't want to be like some of the potentially some of the bigger bookmakers that just run on those sort of consistent sort of margins and and there is no volatility because that's what makes it enjoyable as well. In the uh, as, as you said, it's, it's very much like it, it does go for a punter. Um, you know, good days and bad days. Any tips for the punters out there, mate, for how to put a day behind you? Are you good at that? Oh, I'm good at it sometimes. I'm, I'm not so good at it other times. Should, should we ask the uh, Should we ask the family instead? <laughs> yeah, you should ask the family. The, the dog, the do- dog normally, uh, the dog <laughs> normally get the cops a bit of a kicking when we're going ordinary, and sometimes we're going that bad, and I miss him. So, um, but it's, um, it's it's one of those things where it, it, it's like anything. If if you if you're attached, if you got a bit of a, you know, like if if you're invested in something, you, you have to uh, be. Um, you have to be emotional at the end of the at the end of the situation because it means you care and, and we're we're really we care about the results we spit out. It's not just the the financials; it's it's the process you go through. And for me, it's probably you know if if we handle everything correctly at our end and, and we don't get the result, then that's just variance. You can't do much about it. But it's when you you sort of realise you haven't handled a book or a situation to the best of your ability, then that's probably when that disappointment sinks in. So. I guess from a punter's point of view, you just have to look at that process. And I always find, you know, I, I know deep down if, if I can, no matter how big the swing is, if I can sit there and not have to watch the game, then I know I've handled or we've handled the game correctly. If, if it's one of those ones you find you're, you're watching that that event or that race or that match a little bit closer, you know you've probably made a little blue. And, and that, that's the sort of advice I give to 
punters to put yourself in a position where you you you, you run your your sequence or whatever your strategy is, and at the end of the day, win, lose, or draw, you, you would do the same thing again. And obviously, you know, when you have those losing results or that winning run, you you, you have to you have to go back and you go back to the drawing board. Do I need to change anything here? But the biggest suggestion or biggest bit of advice I give to anyone out there is don't make a, a significant change when you're emotional because that never works. You know, you're always fine. You'll make a, a change when the results are gone against you or, or whatever. And, and it's like anything, it, it, it goes up and down. You're always going to make that, that decision at the wrong time. So I always sort of, when, when we, we are considering making a change of strategy, I, I put a little line in the sand. I say, okay, in seven days time, if I still feel this way, I'll make that change. But you very rarely make a knee-jerk reaction because it just never, ever bodes well. And that, that would be the biggest bit of advice I give to punters to, to, to give yourself a, a few days or a week lead time when you, you, you settle down, you haven't got that red mist in your eyes anymore, and then, then reassess and see if you still need to make a change. Best of the best premium with the highest limits on Saturday, Metro and feature race days. Topsport.com.au Speak to a lot of punters, obviously, and it's it's funny uh, the way that different people deal with with good days and bad days. You speak to some punters who they have a really bad Saturday. We've got guys who they're comfortable just sitting up all Saturday night and trying to work out where they went wrong. We've got other guys who turn the computer off and tune out of it completely and and don't even want to know about it for maybe another twenty four hours or so. Um, do you have a, a a trick yourself? If say you've had a particularly bad Saturday. Is there anything in particular you do to, uh, to maybe get away from it or the opposite? Um, yeah, I, I never make a decision that night. Like I'll, I'll, I'll go and I'll, you know, if, if you need to tune out, you might go and stick something on the TV or you, you, know, you, know, you might even just go to bed. You might just go to bed and lie, lie down, be in, in your own thoughts. And then, yeah, you, if, if you need to make, make a change, I always leave it the next day. It, it's, to me, if, if you're going to the drawing board straight away, um, you know, particularly for a lot of the, the punters you're talking about, that they've built strategies over an extended period of time. And you can't just unpack that whole strategy in one day or one night, particularly when you're emotional and you're tired after a bad day, because everyone is. So mm. my, my, I certainly don't do anything the night of. I'll, 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 I'll work out potentially what I want to investigate or what I want to do, but I'll never ever do anything until the next day or you know a week later or whatever because you, you need to you need to give yourself that opportunity for that variance to swing back and and you need to back your strategy you put in place the first time around so I always err on not changing things too much but probably the other bit of advice is when you're going bad not to stake up just to stake things back a little bit get your confidence back a touch and, and then then steam forward again mm. sort of thinking about it as how it might be for a bookie um, particularly these days um, at least for, you know, most punters, we have specialised in something. So they might have a bad day mm. at the races. So they'll tune out and watch a game of footy or something. Is it a bit harder for you, given you guys oh. tend to have, you guys, everywhere you look, you've got money riding on it? Yeah. And, and, and I think that's where I was saying, like, sometimes you can't do anything right. You can't do anything well. Like, it's, it's one of those situations where, we're betting 24 seven. So you've had a bad day on the racing and the footy rolls around and then <laughs> you have a bloke lining up a shot from 30 out in front to cover the line. He misses. And then you go to a, a soccer game where he misses the penalty. And, and it, <laughs> so there isn't a lot of respite. And, and, and that's where you need to just sort of take that deep breath. You need to make sure you've got different people handling the events to the strategies you brought in place before, you know, the, the bad run started or the, the, the good runs going. And, and, and yeah, you, you can sometimes play up your winnings. If, if you're in a position, like I, I don't mind that sort of strategy, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky in that regard, because as you say, a lot of punters do specialize on something, particularly footy punters. They've got four or five days to sit back and reassess and, and those sort of things. I guess the only difference would be if you're a footy punter and there's been a significant change that's happened out of the blue, like your rugby mm. league, uh, last weekend where the, the sin bids are coming to play, then yeah, definitely you need to try to make a, a, a decision on how you're going to counter that on the fly. Um, but that's a unique sort of scenario, but yeah, it, it is tricky because, when you've got thing, uh, big sporting events going 24-7, um, you, you sometimes just cop a flurry of punches and you get a bit wobbly there for a while. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned uh, the magic round last last week for the NRL and um, obviously the whole rugby league world just just lit up with what was going on on the field with guys being sent off. Um, what was the impact you guys saw? Yeah, obviously a lot of sin bins, a lot of points scored. Um, and like everyone's on there whinging and complaining and those sort of things. But the reality is, is it's an opportunity. And that's the thing, like you can put yourself in front of 
of these changes. Like that's where the really sharp punters take advantage of a, of a situation there where you, you've got an opportunity now that the rules have changed. Have the bookies caught up with it? Has the rest of the market caught up with it? We can put ourselves in a position where we can price ourselves a little bit differently to the market if, if we're onto this a bit quicker. So um, it, it's funny. I, I, I noticed that a bit, but like a, a lot of the punters out there, the really shrewd punters were, were taking a lot of wider options. They're taking teams to get to 30 first. They're taking the, the, the ones where the momentum was kicking in because of teams that may lose players to the sin bin. And, and they identified that after a couple of games of play. So it's an interesting one, but yeah, that was our obvious, the one, the, the, the total points need to go up. We need to look at those wider options because you can see a team get on a roll or get a bit of momentum going and it can really change the complexion of the game. It's particularly if a team drops to 12 or 11 players and they're in trouble anyway, those score lines can really blow out. So we, we've made a couple of little subtle tweaks going into this weekend and we'll just keep monitoring it and, and see where it takes us. Did you see any immediate impact in terms of um, like in-play betting? Yeah, the in-play betting is a, a, a tricky commodity as well because it's trying to get a read of, of different scenarios and obviously they're model-based, a lot of those, uh, a, a lot of the in-play logic and formula. So to change a model is a lot harder to do immediately as to use that sort of human touch. So that was something that, yeah, it was a little bit difficult to counter, but um, yeah, we're, we're working our way through that little maze to try to, to try to get ourselves in position for this weekend. Mm. We spoke last time. Um, we just had the announcement of minimum bet limit changes in Victoria, which was the limits themselves weren't changing, but instead of kicking in at 9am race day, they will now kick in for all bookmakers uh, when the markets first go up, whenever that is, might be a few days out. Um, you guys already took bets before race day anyway. Um, has it meant many cha- has it meant any change at all for you in terms of the way that markets might be moving? Have you noticed anything yet? Uh, we haven't noticed a, a great deal and, and I, I sort of thought that would be the case because we have always uh, bet to those limits. It didn't really change our policy at all. And I suppose the the, the real positive out of this trial is it hasn't changed a lot. Um, mm. I think the concern for punters, about this was that our oh, bookies aren't going to put their prices up as early or they're going to do this. So they're going to offer inflated percentages or they're going to do all these different things. And that was a negativity coming out of it. And from what I've seen, and, and I, I obviously can't comment for every uh, bookmaker out there, but I haven't seen a lot of change, which I think is key because it means now that we're in, we're still in that same environment from a punting landscape, but everyone can get on whenever they want to get on. So um, I think that's the biggest positivity out of it. I, I hope it stimulates the market. I think once we get to the spring, it's going to be a real catalyst of, of, of leveraging turnover off each other. And, and there's a few dominoes that have to fall uh, from our end. And, and, and if, if they can, then we're going to try to ramp things up even further. We're, 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 we're in talks with a couple of different racing bodies over a number of topics. So we're constantly looking at ways to evolve our product. And, um, and yeah, I, I think this is the first step. And what I've found is that marketplace is a lot solider, uh, more solid, should I say. And, um, and yeah, you, you know that that first price is a, is a genuine price. And if you see it go up, then you, you don't need to hold your breath and hope that it sticks around at nine o'clock in the morning. You can, you can back it. You can back it with confidence and you can back it wherever you want. So I, I think it's a positive. I, I think there's still things that can be done to, to improve every element in the industry. You, you, can, you can never stop improving things, but I think we're certainly taking a positive step forward there. And I think those concerns that a few people potentially have hopefully been allayed. Bet with topsport.com.au, Australia's fairest bookmaker. Quite a few changes. Obviously, we speak a lot about the uh, the cost of, of betting to to both bookies and to punters. Um, so there's, you know, constantly changes going on in that space. So I guess w- w- where are we at across the board in terms of the different states and codes and sports? Um, are there any you would say now which are particularly good for, for I guess, increasing your turnover and, and any which are at the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, so we, we, we've been discussing this a, a bit over the last 18 months. And from our point of view, the, the, the best model in our view on the Gallup's product is still the South Australian model. Mm. We're doing a lot of things there. We just jumped off the carnival. We had a, had a really strong carnival in terms of holds on the South Australian product. Um, the Queensland product is, is, from our point of view, something that is favourable in our point of view and it promotes growth. So we're pushing that product as well. Mm. Uh, the New South Wales one is probably that one in the middle. Uh, I'm talking thoroughbreds again here. The, the Greyhound product, if, if we could get all the models to be run like the New South Wales Greyhound product, then we would be very, very happy campers and we'd, we'd reflect that in, in the product that we were offering on all, on all products. But unfortunately, that's, that's 
not on the table at the moment, but New South Wales Gallops are sitting there in the middle. And, you know, it's one of those ones where uh, they're, they're probably that, that, that spot in the middle, which I don't see moving too much. And then we've got the, the, the two states at the back end, which uh, we battle to handle and we battle to be profitable on is the Victorian and the Western Australian model. And the reason for that is that the, we're levied a fee based on if we make profit on a meeting, we pay a share of our revenue. Mm-hmm. If we lose on the meeting, we pay a share of our turnover. Now, all the other states have a similar sort of model in place, but it's based over an extended period, like a month. Mm-hmm. Um, now, what that means is that you can't have variance in your results. You, you can't afford to, to win 20 meetings out of 30 because you'll be on the losing side of the ledger, um, mm-hmm. which, in my opinion, is the most problematic uh, issue for punters out there because you find then that bookmakers really aren't, aren't prepared to take risks on, the, on those states' products. So Victoria are aware of these issues and, and, and we're hopeful that there might be some positive change there. That, that, that's one of the key dominoes to fall in order for us to really ramp up our offering come the spring. Um, and we've had finally some positive news. I had a really positive conversation with uh, West Australia there in the last couple of weeks, which has been a long time coming. Mm. Um, but we've seen what Betfair did for their Western Australian product a couple of weekends ago. And to me, we're finally at a point now where they actually un- they, they, they realise there needs to be a move, there needs to be a shift, and we're hopeful we can get a result there. And if that were the case, I, I think that, that that's what I want, to, want punters to understand, that we're not whinging about what we have to pay. It's, it is what it is, but we have to offer products that give us the opportunity to be profitable on those states. And at the moment in Western Australia, we can't. But if we can get these changes... We'll roll back best of the best on the West Australian product. We'll release our markets in line with all of the other states and we'll go back to betting best tote in the place on, on, the, on the Saturday meetings, which is what we do on all the other states. So you can see the direct correlation between a positive fee structure movement and the, the products and the limits that we are prepared to offer on the back of it. So yeah. at the moment, that's the sort of lay of the land. We're hopeful of a couple of positive changes and we'll make sure any of those savings that come across will be ensuring that punters are looked after and get a better offering and bang for their buck when they bet in those states. Mm. So it sounds like the, uh, the New South Wales Greyhounds is the, um, is the best model for, um, yeah, for where you guys sit and then what you can pass on to punters. Is there any, any particular reason for that? Anything they have in place yeah. that others don't? Yeah, so the reason from our perspective, and everyone's different, and that, that's, that's a difficulty in trying to make these decisions because every bookmaker is different, and that's why I probably wonder why we need a one-shoe-fits-all model. Um, mm. And I know Betfair's been beating that drum, drum for a while, and I think we're starting to get a little bit of positivity in that regard. But from our point of view, why the Greyhound New South Wales model is so good is that the, the variance is based over the course of a year. And, um, and that way, it just eliminates a lot of that variance, which is so key. Like, you, you, can, you can have a bad losing month and, um, and it can almost n- not knock your whole year apart. So where mm. the, the, the Greyhound New South Wales product looks at the profitability over the year and it charges you of the greater of at the end of that year, even though they still invoice and we still pay monthly, it's then recalculated at the end of the year and then they, they, they give you a rebate if, if it's over that figure. Now, what I'm, I'm, I want to make sure the punters understand is we know we have to pay race fields we, we, we're happy to pay race fields we want to be paying these things to, to make our racing products stronger to make the prize money stronger uh to ensure the racing's fair we know we have to do that but we need to make sure that what we're doing is is paying it in a sustainable way and, and that's where we, we've spoken many times mark about the the way these races have just popped up where these monumental prize money numbers have come come out of the woodwork and we're not getting better quality racing and all of us all the, the only way you can do that is by levying the bookies harder and that mm. that reduces in in that results in uh, higher margins lower limits and these sort of things so we just need to find a consistent approach where we're we're still keeping our prize money at really really strong levels and we're growing it but it needs to be done in a way that everyone is is, is in a better better spot in five years time and that's my concern and that's why we're sort of constantly fighting so hard over this topic yeah yeah sure so um just jumping over to sport one thing have noticed looking around the um Top sports site, and I think we touched on it previously, is the number of markets on the AFL, particularly at the moment. You've got a, a huge number of betting markets um, on every game, a lot of uh, goal kicking markets, that sort of thing. Um, that's increased, I assume, by the looks of it. Yeah, so we, we, we've spent a lot of time and resources on redefining our AFL model to get more markets out and more consistent offerings. So 
we've um we've just released our first uh, pass of that in the last week or so, where our our number of markets are now up over four hundred for every AFL game. So it's a really strong offering. We've got, in my opinion, the market leading offering on the goal scorer type markets on AFL. We we offer you know twelve players every every game. Your number of goals. We have. Um, anytime goal scorers first like there's a, there's a whole myriad of them so if anyone mm. likes a bit on the AFL I employ you to jump on there and have a look we're, we're looking at bringing some more of those out in the next month as well uh, then we're going to move our disposal markets into a similar sort of offering and then we're looking at fantasy down the line as well so we're, we're just trying to trying to offer our customers a bigger range of markets and the the important thing with that is that they're just not going to be um, you know, window dressing markets. We're going to sit, have them there, and we're going to be happy to take a bet off everyone to a certain extent. You know, we, we never go out there and say we're going to bet everyone everything they want, but mm. we'll, we'll be ensuring that everyone gets a, a fair bet on on every one of those markets. And if we've got a price up, then if you want to back it, you're, you're entitled to. So we're looking forward to that. It, it's it's amazing how our turnover grew on the back of just releasing these markets over one week. I think our turnover on the goal scorer markets themselves were up eight times week on week, which is a, is a mm. pretty significant figure. Um, we're, we're looking to add more of these offering into our uh, same game multi um, allotment, which I think will um, will improve that even further. And, and yeah, we're, we're really happy with that product. We take a lot of pride in, in developing these new tools and, and it's something I feel is going to be well received by all the punters out there. Uh, with that many markets and same game multi, it must be a, must be a bit of fun working out the calculations on that. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, and it's a lot of fun when you're sitting there and you've got absolutely no idea what you're cheering for when the game starts. So it's, <laughs> it makes it interesting, but it's 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 great, and 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 I think punters love that, and just the uh, seeing the multis roll through and and being able to offer it in what we feel is a very fair pricing when we spit out our same game multis. Like if you compare the prices we're offering compared to the marketplace, you know, don't no disrespect to anyone else. I'm not saying this for that reason, but I feel that our our prices are really strong and you're going to get a fair price when you have a bet and it adds a bit of bit of interest in in the the friday night footy or the saturday night footy and as you say if you've had an ordinary day on on the races on a saturday or you've had a really good day on the saturdays so you can sit back and have a real recreational soft bet just uh something to sit there and watch the footy and and, and enjoy it for what it is and you, you can put your five ten dollars on it and, and and get a bit of enjoyment throughout the game yeah right well it is um yeah it's it's friday afternoon but um yeah probably the big one Tomorrow is the Doombin Cup, so we might just yeah quickly touch on that. Looks like the money's come for the favourite, and uh, also Sir Dragon it and uh, Mugger Two's perhaps drifted a little bit. Um, would that be the case? Yeah, we, we've seen really good money for Sir Dragon it. It's been six dollars into four forty and backed at nearly every price point. The favourites um, been three ten into two sixty. We've got it rated a bit shorter. It looks the one to beat from our point of view, but it has been backed. But the the, the, the toppy is the one that all the the, the heavyweight of money's come for. There's been a little bit of a specking for Mugger too. It looks a really good race, and mm. and Older Villiers has been very consistent in this campaign without getting into the winner's circle. So seventeen into fifteen, probably not the uh, not without a chance as well at big odds. So it's really good to see some of these horses up here for the uh, for the Brisbane Carnival. That Gold Coast meeting a couple of weekends ago was one of the strongest meetings I've ever seen at the Gold Coast. And you look at a field like the Doombin Cup, and it's uh, it's a high quality field, which is which is really good to see. And I, I think that shows how how much that, that racing in Queensland's evolved over the last two years. Like that, they were one of the first to come to the party. And what we were talking about with being innovative in their product fee structure, and and I think we're seeing the rewards in this, where we're getting some some races where we've got top or high high prize money. You, you, you're you're generating the the real top horses to these races. And, and yeah, I, I think it's, it's a state where racing's really on the up at the moment. Mm. Any money for, for Melody Bell, maybe 21 into 18, a little bit. Yeah, 21 into 18, a little, little bit of specking. Like we'll, we'll see, obviously the vast majority of the, the wages will come tomorrow when we're hundred percent sure of the track conditions and the scratchings and these sort of things. But yeah, it, it's again, $21, $18. It, it's, it's a chance for a horse like that. I'll, uh, boss them on board and, and the best of the best like that's something we're going to get a lot of money on on this race we're, we're betting to win 10,000 on every one of these runners in the Doomer Cup tomorrow best of the best which I think is uh, something that's hard to compete with out there elsewhere yeah absolutely sounds good well um, as we said off the top you are uh, you had a good night last night so hopefully the uh, the punters get a bit back off you uh, this weekend one thing we know is everyone will be trying, so we're looking forward to the battle. It's, there's always another day on the punt, so it's uh, yeah, it's going to be a big weekend. A lot of racing, a lot of sport, and uh, PGA golf as well. So plenty happening on Monday morning too, where we've uh, taken a really sizable bet on the on the PGA. One of our customers had fifty thousand. He's come a couple of times for John Rahm, who right. is still third favourite in the betting. So it'll be a little bit of a nervous watch if he's lurking around. Come. Uh, 
come uh, Monday morning. So we'll see how that one ends up. All right, we'll uh, we'll cheer him home for you guys then. It's, uh, sounds good. <laughs> All right, thanks sounds for that. Uh, thanks for that, Tristan. We'll uh, we'll chat again soon. Speak to you then. Thanks. Fully Australian owned and operated. Bet with topsport.com.au, Australia's fairest bookmaker.